Good morning, everybody. You join me back at the Vario. Um, I'm concentrating on the AC electronics at the moment. Not quite got enough <laughs> headroom in here. We're kind of both crushed into the back. Uh, Pixie's taping on tape, aren't you, Pixie? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's a lovely sunny day, uh, but it's really windy, so we're trying to get out of the wind for you so it's not quite as crackly. Any who's it's? I've not quite finished the DC. Uh, but before I have, I wanted to get a lot of the AC laid out because it kind of occupies the same space rather than getting the cable management perfect on the DC and then have to rework it. Um, so it's kind of the AC's happening at the same time as the cable management and finishing touches are happening on the DC. But it's been for a shakedown test. The people that own this went away for the weekend, uh, bank holiday weekend, and they didn't explode once. Um, so great news. I mean, that's a result, isn't it? Um, so we're on with the AC now, and primarily the thing that I want to get talking about today is something called an automatic transfer switch, which switches between inverter power, which is AC power. When I say DC, I mean these red and black connections here. I'm talking about 12 volt or 24 volt. When I say AC, I mean mains voltage stuff, domestic powered stuff, stuff that you plug into a socket, if you're a Brit at least, stuff that you will plug into a socket that looks like that, okay? Or in the UK, I should say. Um, so any who's it? That's our AC. This is AC, a hookup connection that you could use at a from a generator or from a, a friend's, you know, kitchen socket through a cable that you've thrown through the window or a hookup connection that you'd use at a campsite. That's all AC as well. So an automatic transfer switch, which is what I've got here, this contactor, I should say, in here, is a form of relay. Now, I've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole with relays just recently. Um, I think there's, at last count, there's something like 19 different types of relay and about 60 aftermarket relays that I'm fitting to Poppy. It might be even more than that, actually. I don't know. But anyway, lots of the systems that I want to automate, I'm going to automate using things like relays or the contactors, I suppose, is another uh, form of relay. And that is a contactor. So I'm going to chat you through today how that works in relation to the other AC components. I'm not going to get too heavy into RCDs and M um, MCBs and things like that because it'll all just get well, very long-winded. So I'm gonna concentrate on this contactor, tell you what it's doing and how it is that it automatically switches from inverter power to hookup power without you having to do anything other than connect the hookup connection and back to inverter when you remove the hookup connection without you having to do a thing. It just works automatically. I'm going to attempt to draw this out and I'm not sure how well this is going to work. But anywho, the type of contactor that we have there is a 2NC, 2NO. Two normally closed, two normally open. Um, so what this means is we have got, it's effectively four switches in one box. Two of them are normally open and two of them are normally closed. So let's have our contact points here. One, two, three, four. And let's have our exit points here. One, two, three, four. And then in between, we've got this going on. Uh, yes. Okay, so what that means is at rest, this has these two here that end up contacting down here just straight out the box, okay? And then, well, I'm not gonna be able to do this because this is a permanent marker. When you energize the circuit, so that's at rest, that's with this, how it works. Anything you put in there ends up coming out the bottom there, okay? And then, when you apply a current, and then when you apply a current, it works the opposite way. These two here open, and these two here close. So what that means is that one's connected to there and that one's connected to there. 
What this allows us to do is have our shore power connection going, or hook-up connection going in here, live and neutral, and our live and neutral from an, our, our inverter. So these two here are shore power, or hook-up connections, so we end up with live coming out there, neutral coming out there, in the situation where we've energised the circuit, we energise it by uh, connecting it up to a hook-up connection, and then when we remove that shore power connection, these close, click, click, and these open, click, click. Now the great thing is they do this synchronously. That's really important. Asynchronously would mean, so for example, those two close and then the other two open, but this happens synchronously. So in the moment these start to move to close, these move to start to open. And that means at no one point is the inverter directly connected to mains electricity. So some of you, having seen me do that, couldn't be more bored and are probably already switched off. But if that's pricked your interest, I want to show you where that fits in with the rest of the circuits in that box. Because you might like some of how, it, how else this automates things. So we're going to have our hookup connection. I'm not sure how I'm going to draw that. Well, it's, it's three dots. That's our mains hookup connection. And that goes through to an RCD. So it goes in through the top, out through the bottom. That's our safety device. That's what's going to hopefully prevent us from dying if we get anything wrong. And then we've got our inverter. Which again goes through an RCD. And again, hopefully protects us from death if we get anything wrong double pole RCDs in both these instances, just out of interest. And then there's a couple of things that happen here. This RCD, this is the shore power one, as well as going into our contactor that we just talked about, it also splits off and goes to a bunch of additional sockets, okay? Additional three pin sockets that you could plug other devices in. So one of the great things about this is if you're, so you can have sockets that come via this contactor, so irrespective of whether you're on inverter power or mains hookup power, they work. These ones that peel off from here and go, don't go via the contactor only ever become live when you're on hookup power. One of these devices, for example, could be a 12 volt battery charger. So that, that go all the way around to your battery. And so the only time the battery charger would ever become active is if you were plugged up to a shore power connection, which I think is really useful. You don't have to change anything. You just literally you plug into hookup power and you automatically your battery charger kicks in. You could have other circuits as well. You could have real high power stuff. We on the Vario have got a water heater on here that will work on either gas or electric. Um, the electric, um, side of things heating the air or heating water using electric uh, you've got to have a significant battery bank a significant inverter to do that we don't really want to do that the only time we ever want to use the electric on the water heater is again when we're on our hookup connection so we connect the water power uh, water heater to another socket and so on and so forth you might have something that charges an e-bike or something and again only does it on hookup power so that's where that split comes in from the rcd there okay and then we've got our connect um our various connections shouldn't have put that there Let's just get rid of that <laughs> honestly right, let's try this okay okay so we have just going to concentrate on the lives so we have a live that comes out of our rcd goes into our contactor we have a live that comes out of our rcd on that side and then a live coming out the rcd that operates the contactor that's the important thing this is the bit that pulls the contacts over operates the contactor energizes the contactor and what that means is it prioritizes shore or hookup connection each time so anytime you connect the hookup connection a split feed from the RCD is pulling the contactor and saying, contactor, do this, you know, activate, do the thing you're supposed to do. 
Whereas the rest of the time, it's just at rest. And when it's at rest, it has automatically clicked. That's all well and good, but we've got four connections at the top here and four connections at the bottom here, okay? And what happens is when, as I've shown in that previous diagram, that one connects to there, that one connects to there, and so on and so forth. So how do we use that? Well, that's, that's the really good bit. On the bottom here, we can just dummy across these connections. The two lives and the two negatives can be dummied across like that. Then they can go into a secondary perception circuit called an MCB. So live and neg into there, and then onward to all our sockets, okay? So any of these sockets, whether you're on inverter power, uh, inverter power, or whether you're on hookup power, either way, there's gonna be energy here, there's gonna be AC here, and because we've dummied across the two lives and we've dummied across the two negs, uh, that's drawn in accurately, by the way, um, <laughs> but you'll, you'll see from the diagram on the actual device itself, you dummy them across, and then at that point, whether there's inverter power going in here or whether there's hookup power going in through the top, it ends up in power getting into our that's my cleaning cloth gone for a bit. Um, it ends up getting into this MCB, which then energises your sockets. Any of these sockets that come out the bottom of the contactor will be live, irrespective of whether you're on inverter or hookup power. It's over to the inverter side. We've almost beaten the rain. It's just starting to spit now, so I better be quick. I've got something. On the side of the van is a connection like this, okay? And it's got pins there. Now, I've tried aftermarket off-the-shelf automatic transfer switches previously and the thing that I was very unhappy about was when you were on inverter power there was actually leakage via however the device worked and um, so there was power here and it was possible to get a zap and I was really not very happy about that at all so the brilliant news about using this contactor um, or this type of contactor is that whilst you're on inverter power there is no current here there's no voltage there's nothing you can hurt yourself on so you can press this all day long and you wouldn't get zapped i'm going to pop up on the screen now a, a, a proper wiring diagram not this but i wanted to try and chat you through the process i'm going to stick up on screen now something that hopefully makes a little bit more sense is a little bit more organized uh, sorry for the rush videos. That's how they're coming at this moment in time. I'm a busy boy. Uh, it'd be really nice to do your kind of, uh, shall I say, a kind of Max and Sophie style presentation with something. I think their production value is really good. Um, but I've got two choices. Either not produce any videos or produce them, even though, really and honestly, we all know we're a bit crap. <laughs> but until I've got such time, until I'm on with a build for Poppy, uh, which is hopefully about five or six weeks from when this goes out where I should be full time working on Poppy until such time um, they're a bit rushed like this so uh, bear with us in the meantime but hopefully that's of value to a few of you thanks ever so much for watching uh, cheerio bye bye